too much YA and I wanted to try the book test, not sure how it's gonna go. Um, so I wanted to do the mid-year book breakout tag, but I've seen two different versions of it uh, with slightly different questions and they both say 2020. So I kind of compiled them into one list. So it might be slightly different than other ofs of this tag that you've seen done. I'm going to put the list I use in the description if you wanted to do it yourself, although there's like 20 people watching this. So if any of you have booktube, please do this. Uh, so question one is how much have you read? To put it short, I have read too much. Um, I've actually only been cataloging my reads since mid-March when the globe shut down, which also happens to be when my 18th birthday happened. So like, I kind of like that I've been cataloging things since I became an adult, whatever adult means. I definitely don't feel like an adult. Um, and since then I've read, today is June 15th, so this is going to be a lie if I'm posting this in the future. But as of right now, between mid-March and June 15th, I have read 180 books. Um, my normal Goodreads reading goal is 100, but obviously situations are different than they normally are right now, so I've increased that to 366. So hopefully I'm on track right now, I'm about 10 books ahead of schedule. Uh, hopefully I stick with that because I'd really, really love to be able to say I read a book a day this year. That'd be so awesome. Question two, what have you been reading? I read every YA book I can get my hands on. I generally don't tend to discriminate with genres of YA, just like I'll read any style. I love inverse books, I read normal books, I love mixed medium books. Uh, I've read a few graphic novels, not that many this year, and then I just read every single YA genre. Like If it's YA, I consider I'll read it. I do read a bit of new adult, but I don't think I've read much new adult this year, uh, and I think I've read one or two middle grade books. Number three, the best book you've read so far. Uh, so I'm not going to sh like physically show the copies of the books of every book I mentioned because one, I just don't own them all. Two, that's a lot of work uh, and I'm a little lazy. But I do have the things she's seen on hand because I already know this is going to be my answer for a lot of these questions. I love this book so much. Um, it's an own voice story by an Aboriginal um, brother and sister writing duo. And I feel like you don't see sibling writing duos a lot, which is incredible. I love that. And it's told through two perspectives, one of which is in verse, because imagine my favorite book not having an inverse portion. Uh, I'm a little obsessed with that style of books. Um, and it's the, this girl who's been a victim of a crime, and it's told in this kind of like Lewis Carroll-esque fairy tale way that makes, even though it deals with serious subject matter, it makes it accessible to readers of all ages, which I think is absolutely incredible. Like, uh, if you didn't know, I want to be a teacher. If I end up teaching slightly older grades, because like it does deal with serious issues that specifically Aboriginal young girls um, face in Australia, because that's where the book's set, but pretty much globally. Um, yeah, it deals with that, and it's a way of teaching and talking about it that is less likely to be triggering to someone who suffered through what this book is about. Um, honestly, it's mind-bogglingly good. Like, it's so criminally underrated, and I think absolutely everyone should read this at some point in their lives. It's super short, too. It's like, give me a sec, it's like less than 200 pages. There's no valid excuse to have not read this book. Number four, the best sequel I've read so far, which I also have not down here, so I might as well grab it, uh, Thunderhead from the Ark of the Sky, uh, which is just my, my new favorite trilogy. I haven't read The Tool yet, so The Tool, by the time I post this, I'll hopefully have read The Tool, because I'm planning on reading it tomorrow. It's only three books away in my TBR. Um, so it might beat it, but as of right now, the best sequel I've read is Thunderhead. I am so obsessed with um, The Ark of the Sky incredible series. Everyone needs to read it. I talked about it in my May monthly wrap up. I'll link that somewhere. So new releases I haven't read yet, but want to read. So I'm really, really awful at knowing when books actually come out, like could have come out in 2017 and I'll call it new. Uh, so I did, I looked at other people's Goodreads list for this. I cheated. I'm so sorry. I just looked at the things and I'm like, oh yeah, those are on my TBR. Uh, so the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which I'm also scared to read because I know I've been hearing very, very mixed things about it. Uh, so I'm not, if you've read it, please let me know because I'm so scared. Um, One of Us is Next, I really want to read. I got One of Us is Lying from a friend and I absolutely loved it. Um, A Heart So Fierce and Broken, My Calamity Jane, um, Tweet Cute, Yes No Maybe So, and I want to read The Pink Assassin. Probably more, I feel so bad because I'm definitely forgetting things, but that's my list for now. So six is the most anticipated releases for the rest of the year. Um, I normally pre-order books, like the second I know I want to read something, I pre-ordered it because I like getting pre-ordered mail, but because I am like 
this was supposed to be, who knows what's happening in the world right now, I was supposed to be going to university in a few months, so I wasn't pre-ordering things that are coming out in the second half of this year to my house. So I don't have anything on pre-order, which means I immediately forgot when they came out. Um, I do have Silver Serpents on pre-order, so I know, I know I'm definitely going to read that, and that's definitely coming out in the latter half of this year. I also want to read Blood and Honey, um, Sky Hunter, Loveless, and The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I can't think of anything else. Again, I'm sure there is more. My TBR is like constantly growing, literally thousands of books on it. So there have to be more from the latter half of this year. But that's all I can think of right now. So you're going to have to bear with me. Number seven is Biggest Disappointment. I really want to say Ninth House because I feel like in the scheme of things, I definitely, I went into that one very, very excited. But the thing is, like, well, I like Leigh Bardugo. I've literally only read Six of Crows. I didn't even read the sequel to Six of Crows. I want to go back and do that eventually, but that requires me reading Six of Crows first, which I do not own, and I know for a fact my library does because that's where I read it, but my library is currently closed. So I don't want to buy it, so I'm <laughs> waiting on that. Uh, yeah, but I'm not like a diehard Leigh Bardugo fan yet. Who knows if that'll change. Um, I just read it because it was so hyped up, and I was like, I did generally really, really like Six of Crows, Let's give this a chance. And it was so boring. But that feels kind of like cheating because, like I said, like, it, it wasn't life-shattering to me. Like, I just saw it. It's on my library's virtual library. So I was like, oh, I might as well read this. And just was very let down. Uh, so I'm going to go with Evermore from the Everless Duology, which is a book that I did pre-order because I was really, really excited for it. Uh, and I gave a very mid-range rating, which, like, feels kind of hyperbolic today. I was disappointed. But let me explain. So I love Everless because it's kind of this combination of fantasy and sci-fi. And when you read as much YA as I do, like all fantasy books are the same thing. They're one book. Like it's very boring and very redundant. So I really, really loved how unique it was. Uh, and then the sequel comes out and it's literally, they got rid of all of the cool sci-fi stuff. And they're like, surprise, here's the most bare bones, bland, so, um, fantasy story you've ever read and I was just so let down I regret buying it it ruined I honestly if you regret Everless just don't read Evermore leave it where it is come up with your own ending because it's better than the ending of this book so number eight biggest surprise this one again goes to things she's seen um this one was staying on my bookshelf for literal years because my school library had a duplicate of it and they gave it to me just because weird library um I have a weird relationship with my school library I guess I don't know my school library just gave it to me and it was just sitting on my shelf forever and ever and ever and the only reason I picked it up is because I hate not reading books in one sitting I'm physically incapable of it so if I start a book late at night and it's like 500 plus pages I'm not sleeping uh and this one like I said less than 200 pages so I figured it's a quick read I can get up I had a video conference with my teacher the next morning and life-changing all I guys <laughs> Just read it, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. I'm probably gonna say it multiple times. Okay, so new favorite author. I am so torn on this one because I really want to say, I'm gonna butcher this name, poor guy. Um, Neil Shusterman. I'm so sorry, Shusterman? The author of Ark of the Sky, just because I love his writing so much. But that being said, I haven't read any of his work outside the series, so it could just be that I like the character, like the voice that he takes on for the series. So I'm gonna go with um, Robin Talley, because I've read two of her books without knowing that they were both written by her, and I give them both really high rankings. I love them both. Uh, she writes a lot of own voice and non-own voice. Um, queer YA, the two I read happen to have, um, women love women relationships. Uh, and they just made me so deliriously happy. So I'm gonna go with her, and I can't read to, wait to read everything else that she's put out. Okay, number 10 is Underrated Gems. Um, That's it. No, um, but also I really like The Memory of Things, which is again told by two characters, one of which is own voice because I do have a type. Uh, I also got that from my library years and years and years ago. Um, like three years. I'm acting like I'm not still technically in high school. I don't graduate for a week. But yeah, Memory of Things. It's about 9-11. Uh, it's beautiful. I loved it. Um, I don't hear enough people talking about The Grace Year. I wouldn't say it's super underrated, but The Grace Year, it's I think you can see it. It's up there. It's pink somewhere. Um, it's so great. And it's just like femi it's the Hunger Games with feminism. It's so beautiful. And I loved it in the ending. I still think about all the time. Um, Everhurst isn't even out yet. So I can't say it's underrated. But I know it's going to be underrated. Because it is impossible for that book to get the amount of attention it deserves. Uh, I talked about it in my main monthly wrap up. I will link that. Actually, I already probably linked that. Oh, I love it so much and I have so many thoughts, but this video will be way too long if I get into that. Okay, rereads. 
Uh, I literally only reread Star Girl by Jerry Spinelli, um, which, if you didn't know, is my all-time favorite book. I'm planning on getting a Star Girl tattoo in the near future. Um, yeah, I have two copies right now because basically my local library has one copy for the entire region. Uh, and I've taken it out six or seven times in the last six ish years and it's fallen apart so my little sister for my birthday got me a new copy so obviously i reread it twice this year because how could i only read one copy i didn't steal this from the library i had it when the library shut down and it hasn't opened yet so i just now temporarily own two copies of star girl and i'm living for it it's incredible amazing 12 is books that make you cry which is very very hard because i cry at literally everything uh, I'm not the type of person who ugly cries at books. I can't remember one that made me ugly cry. Just kidding. I do, um, our dark duet made me ugly cry, but that was like a year ago. Um, but if you're looking for someone to get teared up at, like, all the little details in your book, it's me. I'm your girl. Uh, it literally doesn't have to be sad. I cried more at happy things, actually, than I think I do at sad things. But here's a list of books that I can specifically remember, like, the specific moment that I cried. Because it just resonated with me so much. Um, Music from Another World by Robin Talley who I said I want to read more. She's great. Things she's seen. Obviously. Um, Skies, The Black Flamingo, We Are Okay, Evercurse, The Grace Year, Girls of Shadow and Storm, which might have not actually been the writing. That series means a lot to me. I'm probably going to talk about it at some point. Um, Laurel Everywhere and My Long List of Impossible Things, Everything I Thought I Knew. Just, I, <laughs> I cry so much, you guys. Probably half of the things that I've read have made me cry. Books that made me happy. I'm going to say Robin Talley's books again. They just make me, like, I read a lot of fic about queer girls, uh, but something about Robin Talley's writing just makes me want to, I'm smiling the whole time. They're so beautiful. Even if you are not a queer girl, I think you should read them because they're wonderful. I also read a weird amount uh, in the last two months of books about queer witches. I mean, how could you not smile at a book about queer witches? So this question also gets shoutouts to The Scape Racers, The Girl of Hawthorne and Glass, and When You Were Magic, which are all about queer witches or queer covens, and you should check them out. I don't see how that could possibly not be someone's type, but I hope it's- I want it to be my entire aesthetic. I'm aware it's not. Most beautiful books you bought this year. I don't buy a lot- like, I didn't buy a lot of books this year, uh, because my local library for all of last year and last summer was closed, and the year before that I was living with relatives away from my local library, so I kind of- like, I had so many books to catch up on. Uh, and then it shut down and I've been ordering books since then, so a lot of my books are books I've ordered or books I got from Owlcrave. Um, Ignite the Stars is gorgeous. I made a pile next to me, I came prepared. Ignite the Stars, look at that cover! Look at- it's the galaxy! You're gonna find out I just like books with the galaxy on it. The art on We Are Okay by Nina Melchor is just such an aesthetic. It's also just such a good book. Again, if you really like queer YA, go read it. It's also, like, I feel like it's good for all age ranges. I love it so much. Um, Girls of, Girls of Shadow and Storm. I'm pretty sure I technically got it in 2019, but I can't remember for sure. So I'm going to put it on this list anyway, just because it's so gorgeous. And, um, yeah, Girls of Paper and Fire is more gorgeous, in my opinion. I'm so glad it's gorgeous, because otherwise I don't think I would have read it when I did. And it's as I've said, one of the most important books to me, because it was kind of like the first time I felt this new, we're getting, I'm getting emotional because I cried at everything. Um, now entering Adam's Bilge. I didn't actually like this book as much. It's probably my least favorite by Francesca Zappia. Look at that. And then you have Aurora Burning, which I like galaxies. It's gorgeous. Hal's looking great on the cover. I didn't like this book as much as I liked Aurora Burning, but the cover, I would argue, is better. I'm loving it. Newest fictional crushes. So I used to constantly have fictional crushes, but now it's more like I just want to give characters a hug and see them be happy. Uh, but the thing is, if so I'm going to kind of cheat at this question because I haven't had any new fictional crushes, but I read the last two books in the Three Dark Crowns series and I already had a crush on Jules before him, so that crush just kind of like carried over. So her, that is my answer. Next question. Okay, new favorite character is impossible. Um, Except, actually, never mind, it's not. It's Rowan from Arc of the Skies. It's great. I love him. I'm so scared to read this whole because if something happens to him, my life is over. Last question goals for the year. So, obviously, I've already said that um, my Goodreads goal is to read 356 books because this is a leap year, so there are 356 days in it. Um, on the non-bookish side, but kind of still on the bookish side, um, I'm trying to force myself to finish a first draft of one of my arcs just because I am the type of person who I'll write the first, like, three quarters of it. 
and then I will accidentally go back and reread it and reread and edit so many times that I hate it and abandon the project. So right now I am not only pantsing the book at my um, current work in progress, I'm not reading it <laughs> until I have the whole thing and then I can take that mess and try to turn it into something better. So that's a big goal. Um, also, this channel, uh, I hope I keep posting every Tuesday-ish. Probably won't happen, but that sure is a goal, so we're putting it here. Uh, so yeah, that was my mid-year book freak out tag. I'll put, like I said, the order of the questions I did and the questions that I chose to do, because I did combine the two tags at the end. Let me know what you thought, if you agreed or disagreed with anything I did. Um, and if you wanted to answer the questions for yourself, that'd be really, really cool, because I love seeing other people's opinions. Bye!